If you're an older adult noticing changes in your balance, stability, or a drop in your confidence with walking, or if you have a loved one that is dealing with these things, then this video is for you. In my opinion, stability and balance are two of the biggest things that influence quality of life and longevity in the senior population. The worst part is that when seniors begin to lose their confidence in these things, they usually don't see it coming until it's too late and has already led to a fall, serious injury, or worse. If you're new to the active adult, my name is Justin Stiver. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and own a physical therapy business in Florida that specializes in treating the senior population. We have seven locations and see thousands of seniors with balance and stability issues each year. Our goal is to share the knowledge that we have picked up over the years with you for free. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel by clicking the button below. Balance is one of those use it or lose it things. There's certainly an epidemic of balance problems and falls that plague the senior population today. But why is this? Balance can be largely linked to three things. First is vision. Second is your vestibular system or inner ear. And the third is your somatosensory system. Your vision and vestibular systems help your brain figure out where you are and if you're moving. But the somatosensory system is the one we'll be working on today. This is made up largely of a network of specialized receptors that sense pressure, tension, and vibration. Your feet and ankles have a large number of these specialized receptors. When you sway to one side or a little bit too far back or forward, the receptors will send a message to your brain. Your brain will then process that message send a command back down to your muscles with how to adjust or fix your balance. Let's call this the feedback loop. Over time, as most people age, they start taking fewer risks. Maybe it's using a cane, a walker, taking the elevator more than the stairs, or touching the handrails when you walk, or maybe you're a furniture walker, meaning that every time you have the chance, you're touching the back of your couch or your countertop or even your wall. Does that sound familiar? Now, I'm not telling you to stop doing these things if you feel like you need to do them in order to be safe. All I'm telling you is that by taking fewer risks, you're allowing your somatosensory system to gradually weaken over time. This kind of creates a snowball effect where the weaker your system gets, the more careful you become and the less risks you take, which will just continue that downhill slide. So, how can we stop the snowball and turn things around? You need to dedicate just 10 minutes. Yes, just 10 minutes each day to addressing your balance. Try for every day, but at least do it four or five times per week. That adds up to less than an hour each week working on your balance. You'll be shocked like so many of our patients when your balance and walking improve significantly in 10 days or less. Let's start off with the four step balance test to get a good baseline of where you're at today. If you follow our channel, you may already know this, but even so, it'll be a good refresher. So the four-step balance test, I wanna tell you the rules. You're not allowed to touch. So I'm using these fancy parallel bars here. Of course, you're not gonna have these at home. So you can also take a couple chairs and turn them around backwards so the, the high part of the back of the chair is on either side. You can also stand in a doorway where you have something on each side kind of close. But if you touch, you stop the test. So that's okay. I'm not telling you not to touch if you need to, but I just want to note that even if you're changing positions in between different steps of the test, if you reach out and touch the chair, so your door frame, then it's going to stop the test. So I have it here for safety, but I'm not going to use it unless I have to. So step one is bringing your feet together. Narrow base of support, we call it. And the count's going to be for 15 seconds. After 15 seconds, if you didn't have to take a step or touch, then you're gonna to go to step two, which is half tandem. So half tandem, you're gonna bring one foot and place it halfway forward to where the instep of your back foot fits tightly into uh, the arch of the front foot. You're gonna hold this for 15 seconds as well. And by the nature of these tests, they should get harder as they go. So you may start to feel a tiny bit wobbly. 15 seconds later, 
The next step or step three is full tandem. So now you're gonna go from half tandem to one foot all the way in front of the other. This is the one that gets a lot of our patients. So if you had to touch there, remember, stop the test. But I'm even starting to feel a little bit wobbly here. It's kind of challenging. And got about two seconds left. So 15 seconds is up. The last test, which hardly anyone gets to, is single leg stance. So I'm gonna go straight from full tandem to standing on one foot. I'm gonna see if I can hold that for 15 seconds. Okay, so you wanna pay attention to which part of the test began to make you feel a little bit wobbly. Take that exact step and the step after and turn it into your treatment. For example, if you started feeling wobbly between half tandem and full tandem, or even when you tried to go to full tandem, you lost your balance and had to take a step and reach, then until you improve and that becomes easy, that's gonna be your treatment. You're gonna spend maybe five minutes going from half tandem to full tandem and holding for maybe 30 seconds. And then you can go back to half tandem because a lot of times that transition period is the hardest part. So say 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there. And if you, if you, ta if you have to take a step and touch, that's fine. Just reset yourself and start the clock over again. After a couple minutes, switch feet. So go from uh, left to right, and now you're stepping in front with your left because some people have a more dominant side where they feel more comfortable on one foot. You wanna work both of them. In fact, if you identify that one side is weaker than the other, then you wanna work that weak side. A lot of patients struggle with that because they think that because they're not good at something, it's frustrating and they shouldn't do it. No, difficulty is the key here. If it's too easy, you're getting no gain out of it. However, if it's too hard, meaning uh, you picked a step in the test where every two seconds you're stepping and every five seconds you're stepping, then it's also not gonna be giving you much of a benefit. After practicing for some time, you may eventually be able to get all the way through the four steps. From this point, we're ready to add a little bit of a challenge. One option is to add an unstable surface into the mix. Having a softer surface will make your sensory receptors work harder to do their job. We like to use one of these balance pads. We'll link to an affordable option for one of these in the description of the video. But you could also just take a large beach towel. And you wanna make sure to fold it first like a hot dog, or first, I'm sorry, first like a hamburger, okay? And then if you wanna double it up and kinda of make it like a hot dog, you probably have six or seven layers of towel here. So if you put it down, when you step on it, say you're going to that tandem balance, when you step on it, it just adds a little layer of, of difficulty to where now your somatosensory system is having to work a little harder. Over time, what's hard in the beginning will also improve. Other ways to make it more challenging are to add head turns into it. So by adding head turns, you're actually challenging both your vision center and your vestibular center that I talked about earlier. So this is easy for me right now, but if I start to move my head, it kind of throws everything off. You want to kind of fall towards the direction that you're going a lot of times. So it's not letting your eyesight focus on that one point, and it's kind of messing with your depth perspective perception some, and it's also getting that vestibular system in your inner ear moving, and which is actually gonna make you work harder to make up for that by getting better with your somatosensory system. Another great way to do it is just to maybe dim the lights or close your eyes. Now, a lot of people feel really unsteady here, so the second they close their eyes, they kind of tense up. When you feel that unsteadiness, when you're, when you're struggling and your body wants to tense up, one of the things I want you guys to work on is staying relaxed. Being relaxed means being responsive. So if you tense up, you can't move. Imagine trying to race somebody in a sprint and before they blow the whistle, you tense up every muscle in your legs. How fast would you run? How reactive would you be? Not very well. So if you want those natural balance reactions to take over, 
you have to stay relaxed. Try this for 10 days in a row, 10 minutes each day. Once you do, leave us a comment telling us if you made an improvement. I know you will. Don't forget to check out some of the other great balance videos on our channel, like this one. Until next time.